What's up everyone, Ben with the BTC Sessions here and this is your daily session. Huddle that Bitcoin. Before we dive into the news, couple quick things. Number one, do check out my website, btcsessions.ca. There you can reach out to me directly to book your own BTC session with me. Uh, we can chat Bitcoin, wallets, proper security, whatever you need. Just scroll to the bottom and there's a contact form for you there. Secondly... A big shout out to the sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin as collateral for a Canadian dollar or US dollar loan in certain international markets. So be sure to check out the website to see if it's available where you are. Really simple, takes a couple minutes to apply. There's a slider here to see how much Bitcoin you would need to deposit for a certain dollar amount. And if you're approved, usually it's within it's in your bank account within 24 hours. I tried it myself, it works like a charm. So if you're in need of dollars and you don't want to have to sell your Bitcoin to get it, well, this could be an option for you. So check them out. They've got a deal on right now where if you click the link I've pr provided down below uh, and you are successful in obtaining a loan, they will credit your account with an additional $50 worth of Bitcoin. And with that, let's dive into the news. And I actually... I had my show recorded yesterday before this news hit and it's been kind of crazy, but I'm glad that I actually got to wait a day before diving into this because it was kind of a, 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 a flurry of misinformation and it's still not entirely clear because Bitfinex and Tether have kind of clapped back. But essentially what has happened here is the New York Attorney General's office has uh, come down on Bitfinex and said that it is has been covering up an $850 million loss. Uh, essentially, they're saying that they've lost this these amount of funds, so damn near a billion dollars. Jesus. Um, so the attorney general says that they've lost these funds, they didn't disclose it to investors and people using the platform, and they used Tether, uh, or rather the dollars backing Tether, the reserves, uh, to cover those losses and make sure that they could keep up with withdrawals on their platform. And uh, so it says, here's a quote, our investigation has determined that the operators of Bitfinex trading platform who also control Tether virtual currency, so remember, these are the guys that also issue Tether, have engaged in a cover-up to hide apparent loss of $850 million of co-mingled client and corporate funds. New York State has led the way in requiring virtual currency businesses to operate according to the law, and we will continue to stand up for investors and seek justice on their behalf when misled or cheated by any of these companies. Uh, so right off the bat, doesn't sound great. Essentially, what is alleged to have happened is uh, Bitfinex lost more or less $850 million, and then said, well, we've got all these millions of dollars that have been given to us in order to get Tether. Why don't we use those dollars to cover our losses? And then hopefully over time, we'll make enough profits to uh, quietly sweep this under the rug. Well, contrary to that, Tether has also hit back and said that the allegations are more or less full of falsehoods. So um, they say both Bitfinex and Tether are financially strong, full stop. And both Bitfinex and Tether are committed to fighting this gross overreach by the eternal New York Attorney General's office against companies that are good corporate citizens and strong supporters of law enforcement. Now, I found that the best kind of uh, rundown of everything was here on Bitcoinist. And so so they break down kind of what has happened, what, uh, or sorry, what's alleged to have happened, what Tether and Bitfinex have come back with, and kind of compared it to other situations on Wall Street and kind of the double standard that is happening here with the Attorney General's office. So again, they more or less say what the Attorney General said. They lost $850 million of customer money. Um, now, this money was sent to a, a payment processing firm called Crypto Capital. And essentially, this is a bank for Bitcoin and crypto exchanges that cannot get banking elsewhere. So this is what it looks like, Crypto Capital. I've seen this in working with different companies. I've seen and heard of Crypto Capital because it's often batted around as an option when banks are not super friendly, which 
it happens quite often. And this bank was essentially started to fill that gap. Um, anyways, what has actually happened? Uh, and so it looks like that crypto capital has has seized those funds. Um, but, 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 let's see what happened. Uh, so they seized the funds and they are, are being held um I guess as as kind of like a, a safeguard, um, and now they're trying to actively work to get those funds released. So um, right here, it claimed that these funds were not lost, but had been in fact seized and safeguarded, actively working to get the funds released. It went on to chastise the attorney governor, uh, attorney general's office for not doing more to aid and support its recovery uh, efforts. So what's the problem here? Why is there a double standard in this instance? Well, uh, Caitlin. Long pointed out here on Twitter that um, bu, bu, bu. so essentially they are guilty of double standards because of their handling of Merrill Lynch uh, back in 2009 to 2012. So um, Commingle funds used them to cover their own obligations and failed its customers would have been exposed as a massive shortfall in the reserve amount. So essentially, it's the same accusations that they're holding against Bitfinex they held against Merrill Lynch, but they didn't just drop that on the public because there would have been a panic. Well, you know, how how is this better serving the community by dropping it and causing that panic? Because holy hell, it did cause a panic. Take a look at this. Traders have pulled out $165 million from Bitfinex in the past 12 hours. And this was uh, <laughs> this was hours ago. So um, yeah, a hundred or sorry, 17,000 Bitcoins have been removed from Bitfinex. Uh, yeah, so I mean, so far, I haven't seen or heard of anybody having troubles uh, removing funds from Bitfinex. So I guess we'll see what happens there. But all in all, I I've got to agree, there has been a bit of a double standard here because when it has comes with the traditional uh, or the legacy financial system, uh, you, you typically wouldn't see this kind of thing happening and just being sprung on the public because, again, there'd be bank runs. And um, while I am a big advocate of transparency, uh, it's got to be one way or the other. Which way are we going to play it? Are we going to say that there should be immediate transparency all the time? I'm I would probably err to that side, in which case they would have just dropped it on the public with Merrill Lynch. Or are we going to say that, no, we let the internal dealings kind of be dealt with first, and then if there's real problems, then we tell the public. I, I don't really lean that direction. But hey, if you're going to go one way or the other, make a choice and don't have these double standards because it is kind of ridiculous. These are large amounts of money. And when you cause panics like this, I mean, you saw the flash crash in Bitcoin the other day, it dropped from 55 something, 5,500. And then it went at one point under five grand. So it did have quite a drop. It's coming back today. So um Again, now now there's such a big spread between Bitfinex and Bitstamp and everywhere else that uh, it's kind of hard to tell what's what. But um, you know, fifty two, fifty three hundred, somewhere in that range, fifty one hundred in some places. So it's it's kind of uh, stirred the pot, that's for sure. But um, more or less, it's still all over the map. We know that yes, there have been funds of Bitfinexes that were on crypto capital that are seized and being held. Um, and now what was actually happening when it comes to uh, the Tether is that uh, Bitfinex took a no less than a $700 million loan uh, from uh, from Tether. And in exchange for collateral, they offered up shares of Bitfinex. So essentially, as long as Bitfinex continues to trade profitably, then that should eventually uh, work itself out. But here's the problem is as soon as that news dropped, is Bitfinex going to continue to per trade profitably? So it is a little bit of an issue of if nobody knew about it, then the profits would eventually kind of help and, and, and fix the problem. But now that the cat's out of the bag and you have hundreds of millions of dollars being pulled from Bitfinex, is there going to continue to be that revenue source enough to cover those losses and cover that loan from Tether? I don't know the answers to those questions, but 
Oh, we'll just say that there's never a dull moment in crypto. And I'm sorry if this is a little confusing to follow. Uh, it's confusing for me as well. But anyways, I'm only going to touch on one other thing here. Um, and that is Gab. So if you haven't heard of Gab, Gab is a an alternative to things like Twitter and Facebook uh, for people that feel that they have been disenfranchised by those platforms. So people that uh, don't like censorship and prefer a platform that essentially allows you just to have free speech and have your opinions. Um, now, that does contribute to a lot of uh, crappy people being on it at the same time. Um, it it can at times, and um, it can be a bit of a cesspool over there. Um, but you know, it's I do get the point. And the other thing about Gab is they f- have fully embraced Bitcoin as well. Um, reason for that is they kept on having methods of funding and donating being cut off by by payment processors because they're just a free speech platform and they don't censor what people say. And it just kind of points out, well, you know, what, at what point do you draw that line, right? Um, You know, right now it's kind of the alt-right messages that are getting cut out, but it's getting closer and closer to the center um, that are being kind of frowned upon and pushed off platforms. And it's, I, I fully get what's happening here. So essentially, um, Brave Browser now was a free speech and kind of like anti-censorship, um, uh, anti-tracking kind of thing, uh, browser alternative to things like Safari and Chrome and Firefox. And so anyways, Brave launched and originally it was Bitcoin based, but then they launched uh, the BAT token, which allows people to directly reward content creators and everything. They were originally going to do it with Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, maybe Bitcoin wasn't quite ready for it. Uh, maybe they were just impatient. And they didn't really have um, their time preference in order there. But Whatever the reason, they decided to launch their own token and, you know, had their own ICO for it and raised a shit ton of money. Um, and some people were fine with that and others, people that that prefer Bitcoin, were not particularly happy about it. My Myself and a lot of people around me included, you know, oh, that's a shame because we liked the idea of Brave and Bitcoin and and being able to reward people directly and and uh, and I don't want to deal with an additional token. So um, anyways, what Gab has done, this free speech platform has forked the code from Brave and is creating a new browser, uh, I believe called uh, is it Decenter? Yeah, the Decenter web browser. And essentially, it's going to be a free speech marketplace and app store that is powered by free speech money which is Bitcoin. So they're taking out the bat token completely and replacing it with Bitcoin. So you're going to have the same kind of functionality and features that you get from the Brave browser, uh, you know, all the free speech and and the ad blocking and no tracking and privacy and all that great stuff, but get rid of bat and put Bitcoin back where it was. So I'm excited to see this project. I think it's great. Now, if you want to dive into a little of the gripes around the Brave, uh, sorry, the Brave browser and the Bat token, well, I recommend you check out this episode of What Bitcoin Did. Again, a great podcast in itself, but uh, my boss, Francis Pouliot, was on it um, from Bull Bitcoin. Although Build Bitcoin didn't quite exist yet at the time, it was back in November last year. But uh, he talks about Bat and kind of his Twitter spat with the the creator of Brave Browser and why he thinks that tokens in general are a scam, and particularly why he thinks that Bat is really a scam. And there's a few things that he says in there that are a little mind-blowing that I think people just really gloss over. Like he dove into the white paper and saw exactly what it was about and the terms of service and all that. And holy hell, if you're using BAT, you need to take a look because Jesus. Um, But I'm going to leave that there, guys. I will wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. You can do a couple things again to help out the show. Check out my website. Check out the sponsor, Ledin.io. Links for that down below. Um, If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe, hit the like button, hit that bell notification because Every time this airs for the first time, I'm in the chat hitting everybody up. And if you really, really like what you saw, you can drop me a Lightning Network tip on my tippin.me page. If you don't know how to do it, I have a tutorial and I'll link that here. 
and down below. Uh, without any further ado, I will say thank you guys, and I will see you after the weekend for your daily session.